Welcome back to Don't Just Sit There, Do Something for climate science news and easy actions you can take to make a difference. Every step of how we find, extract, refine, transport, and use fossil fuels, oil, coal, and natural gas, has consequences we don't often talk about. One of which, of course, is increasing instability in our climate. Consequences, like how burning coal causes acid rain and mercury in our fish. It's not just coal. With oil, there are also consequences. I hear that if you walk under a ladder with an open umbrella, the coal fairy will curse you and your children. Today, we're going to talk about oil transportation, specifically oil trains. Never heard of them. Oil has to be refined before we can use it. Impurities removed and the chemical structure changed to a more usable form. Don't be so crude. The places where oil is drilled are pretty far from where it's refined and exported to other countries. The oil has to get to the coasts somehow. When I think of moving oil around, I think of tanker ships and oil spills. We've talked a lot before about pipelines and they come with their own risks to water, land, and human health. But there's another way that we move oil around, by train. And pre-refined crude oil contains a lot of flammable compounds, which means there's a risk in addition to spills, explosions. 18 derailments since 2013 have resulted in explosions and oil spills across North America. Explosions are one of those things like knife fights and car chases that should really just be in movies and not so much in real life. Meanwhile, the increasing oil train traffic is 50 times higher than what it was in 2008. Because of our location and high quality railways, Pittsburgh sees a lot of oil train traffic. I can tell a train just went by here actually. It left its tracks. And in Pittsburgh, 450,000 people are in the blast zone. Across Pennsylvania, one and a half million people are at risk. But isn't the only way to decrease the danger literally trying to stop a moving train? That sounds kind of impossible. Actually, there are lots of things that can be done to reduce the risk to people and climate. One, keep these trains out of populated areas. Our rail system was built to connect cities, not to transport explosive hydrocarbons. Two, stop refining and or extracting so much oil. Keep it in the ground. And three, mandate safer tanker design. As you'd expect from a topic without strong federal leadership, there's a patchwork of regulations. 155 elected government and tribal leaders in the Northwest have been pushing back on oil train expansion and insisting on safer transit through the Safe Energy Leadership Alliance. Whereas in Pennsylvania, apparently, we've got some work to do. Here's some actual quotes from the folks trying to keep us safe. Oh, this one's from an NPR article. Quote, if something catastrophic happens, there's no municipality along the railroad that can handle it. We just have to hope that nothing happens, honestly. And uh, our governor said that current standards for tank cars and braking systems are not sufficient. But those are standards set by the federal government, where railroad companies have a lot of influence. You know what I think we really should be talking about is how windmills kill birds, because that is really much more dangerous than highly explosive trains rolling through our cities several times a day. Whether you're on the right side or the wrong side of the tracks, being close to these trains puts you at unequal risk including from increased diesel pollution. I have heard that diesel pollution is a problem. A CMU study recently estimated that the cost due to air pollution and climate pollution is actually greater than the cost due to risk of explosion. If you want to know if the tanker train you're looking at is carrying crude oil or flammable oil products, look for the red diamond with the code 1267. What can you do to help? Well, as it turns out, there's an app called Frack Tracker that will help you report on oil trains when you see them. <laughs> well, that's great for awareness, but what can we actually do to decrease our danger? Secondly, the FAST Act passed in 2015 encouraged states to set up advisory boards to deal with oil train danger. Contact your governor's office and let them know that you'd like to be kept safe from oil trains. One important thing to remember that we've explored throughout our climate and health special feature is that diesel pollution and risks of explosion from oil trains is part of how we get energy for transportation from oil. And that's one part of the fossil fuel landscape that's dangerous to health and climate. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Don't just sit there. Do something. 
There are better ways to get energy without the risk, and the economic opportunities are huge. Thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to check out our other videos. Why you gotta be so crude? You know we'll go renewable anyway.